Roguelike, a video game subgenre that is categorized by permadeath and procedural generation. Just recently, the genre has turned 40 years old, so I felt they need to take a look at both its history and just how far it's come today. The grandfather of all roguelikes is, of course, Rogue, a tile set based game from 1980 in which one must fight to the bottom of a procedurally generated dungeon to grab the amulet of Yendor and make it out to tell the tale. Now, the idea of a game that was different every time was absolutely brilliant. It was something that no one had done before. Despite its brilliance though, it was it was a crock of shit. It was simple and clunky, and nowadays it was really just a novelty. The egg that was yet to hatch into a dragon. Dragons even come out of eggs? I, I don't know. R regardless, today I'm going to take you on a world tour of some of the many roguelikes I've played throughout my life. To start, we'll take a look at Rogue Successors, games that take the gameplay of Rogue and expand upon it, whether bringing it into the new age or adding new mechanics. Now, to anyone out there that has a knowledge on the history of roguelikes, you'll probably be expecting me to cover NetHack. But in all honesty, I think NetHack is shit. It may take Rogue and expand upon it in a million different ways, making it into a near-perfect version of what Rogue is. But I can't even figure out how to properly walk in that game, so I'm, I'm not going to cover something I can't even walk in. The first stop on our tour is Baroque, a game created in 2009 by Brian Walker. Rogue is pretty much just the modern version of Rogue. The plot is the exact same, the gameplay is the exact same, even the art style is still a grid-based dungeon made out of ASCII text. Where Brogue exceeds though is how it improves everything. When you play Brogue, you can easily pick up on what everything is as long as you read. There's even a legend in the corner of the map to tell you what's what. Brogue takes what Rogue was and polishes it, adding new mechanics like swimming and companions to join you, but without ever taking away from the original experience of Rogue. So if you want to play Rogue, but you don't want to play something 40 years old, Rogue is the perfect way to do so. For our second game, we'll be taking a look at Doom RL, created in 2002 by Chaos Forge. Now, imagine. Doom, one of the greatest shooters out there, designed to have you make quick, heat-of-the-moment decisions where there's always something trying to gun you down. Now take that, and transform it into a top-down, turn-based RPG. You must take time deciding your actions, else you suffer fatal blows. Despite being enough of a genre change to give you whiplash, Doom RL is an insanely fun game, taking everything you love about Doom and converting it into an endlessly playable RPG with abilities and stats mechanics. There's even more to it than what the original Doom had, such as high-risk, high-reward arenas that can be discovered and abilities you unlock as you continue further into the game. It's an overall amazing experience that I recommend everyone downloads and tries at least once. Now, for our next stop, we'll be shifting away from games that try to add on to Rogue and move on to games that expand upon the genre. Taking the basic concepts of permadeath and procedural generation and just going wild with them. Now imagine, the Thursday afternoon, in the middle of lunch in 8th grade. Your friend just told you about the new Yu-Gi-Oh structure deck you purchased at Target the other day. Elemental Heroes. The exact type of structure deck you were talking to him about the other day. That son of a bitch was trying to steal your style, and you weren't going to stand for that. So you challenged him to one of the only real forms of middle school combat. Trading card games. Card games have always been a special part of my life. So when I heard about Mega Crit's Slay the Spire, it sounded like the perfect game. Taking the strategy and RNG manipulation of trading card games, and combining it with the permadeath and mystery of roguelikes. Slay the Spire has a very unique take on the genre where you must ascend a deadly tower as you constantly collect new cards to help you fight against strange monsters and procedural generation. If you're looking for a strategy roguelike that you can sit down, play for a few minutes, and be done with, Slay the Spire is that perfect game for you. Now for the next game, please close your eyes for a second and just listen.
Crypt of the Necro Dancer, a rhythm roguelike, first of its kind. Taking what was a slow paced genre and converting it into a game where you're constantly in the heat of the moment, always needing to make split second decisions to keep up with the tempo of the beat as you delve deeper and deeper into the dungeon to discover its secrets. If you're a fan of rhythm games and you're wanting a unique spin on the genre, Crypt of the Necro Dancer should be funky enough to fit your style. Now for the next game on our list, it's likely a game that pretty much none of you have even heard of. It's called Magisite, and it's a little indie game that came out in 2014 and was created by Smash Games. And while this game may be nowhere near the best on the list, it still holds a very nostalgic place in my heart, as I used to play it a lot. Magisite is a side-scrolling dungeon crawler, and the best way to describe it is as if it was Terraria in roguelike form. You must make your way into these strong dungeons, constantly scrounging up resources to improve your gear as you take on stronger and more powerful foes. The game's still solid, albeit a little clunky, but if you have 10 bucks or other means, then I highly recommend you give it a shot, even if it might not be a game that seems like your style at first. As you can see, the roguelike genre is extremely broad, being compatible with almost every genre out there, but for some godforsaken reason, the majority of roguelikes just so happen to be shooters, so let's take a look at some of those. The first shooter roguelike we'll look at is one that probably everyone was expecting on this list. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, created in 2014 by Nicholas. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth is a top-down shoot-em-up in which you must dive deep into the depths of a basement after your mother attempts to kill you in the name of God. The game's specialty is its item system. There's almost a thousand unique items you can find throughout the game, and almost all of them synergize with each other in one way or another. These combinations lead to every single playthrough being unique in at least some tiny way. If you want a good intro into the roguelike genre in general, then the Binding of Isaac is likely the best way to get your foot in that door. Highly recommend. Risk of Rain 2, made by Hopu Games in 2019. It's a third-person co-op shooter, and me mentioning that is actually very important, as the first game was actually a side-scrolling shooter. Now, while I'm gonna be honest, I haven't played much of the first Risk of Rain, it still had a very large following, and was one of the pioneer games in the roguelike shooter subgenre. Now for some reason, who knows why, Hopu Games took a look at their side-scrolling shooter and thought it wasn't enough, so they shifted that fucker into the third dimension. Despite the complete change of style and gameplay, Risk of Rain 2 is one of the best roguelikes I have ever played. Just like The Binding of Isaac, this game has hundreds of items that all synergize and improve you, slowly turning you into a superhuman as the threats around you reach insane difficulties. Every single character in the game plays completely different from the others. You could be the jack-of-all-trades soldier and focus on hit-scanning enemies, or take a back seat as you try out the engineer, who focuses on high DPS using his turrets and grenade launcher. Hell, you could just throw out guns entirely and play all melee characters like the mercenary who's a sword-wielding samurai, or play the loader and punch everything in your path as you swing around like Spider-Man. The only bad part about Risk of Rain 2, and I mean the only part, is its time sink. Once you get good, a single game can last anywhere from one to three hours. But the entire time you're playing is if last. Out of every game on this list, Risk of Rain 2 has my highest recommendation. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little wacky. A subgenre within a subgenre. These next three games aren't roguelikes but instead are games that have DLC or expansions that add roguelike game modes to them. To start off, we'll take a look at The Division, a cover shooter about retaking New York after a pandemic launches the city into chaos, and more specifically its survival DLC. Your helicopter crash lands in New York during the coldest night of the year. Sub-zero temperatures, near uninhabitable. And on top of that, you've been infected by the viral disease. Before you succumb to the cold of the plague, you must find the cure and get to the evac. And to make things even worse, you aren't the only one that wants that evac. Dozens of other players are all actively searching for the cure and evac as well, and they'll get it at any cost. 
placing a unique PvP spin on the roguelike genre, you spawn randomly throughout the city and have to scavenge for materials to collect and build weapons, armor, and medkits to help you take on not only enemy players but also gang members spawned throughout the map. Items, of course, are procedurally generated, so you'll need to memorize the map and pray to RN Jesus. This DLC manages to constantly keep you on your toes for an hour straight, giving you just what you need to barely survive. As long as you're fast enough to get the jump on things, you'll eventually get strong enough to live another day. While finding a lobby nowadays might be near impossible, I highly recommend this expansion. <coughs> the second of our roguelike expansions comes from Call of Duty World War II, and its third Zombies expansion, The Tortured Path. The Tortured Path is an arcade roguelike, taking the normal COD Zombies formula and flipping it on its head. All weapons are randomized, but you can choose what type of weapon you aim for. Each round you have a random objective to accomplish, with boss waves happening every few rounds. There's three separate maps, each having their own objectives, enemies, and playstyles. Out of everything covered, this is the perfect bite-sized roguelike. At worst, your match is only going to be about 40 minutes long. You can just hop in. Kill some zombies and hop out when you're done. The only downside I'd say is that this is probably the least roguelike of what I've covered so far, with the pool of what's actually random being rather limited. And now for our final stop, the 2018 expansion to Arcane Studios Prey, Prey Mooncrasher. After a moon base is destroyed by an alien species known as the Typhoid, you are to delve into the memories of five survivors from the incident and figure out the exact steps they took to escape the base. The only problem is the simulation you're delving into is corrupted. The longer you stay, the harder things become. In a race against time, you have to find a way to get all five characters off the moon base before the system corrupts entirely. While the moon base itself is always the same layout, the events that happen on the moon base are different every time. One playthrough, everything could go completely perfect. But with another, the power could go out and then 30 seconds later a hole in the wall breaks, and that just leads to you needing to find a way to solve both problems before you can continue. The game does actually have a proper story and ending, and should last you at the very least 6 hours, but that's only if you just breeze straight through the story, ignoring all the challenges and extras the game has. For $20 it's probably a bit of a steep price unless you already love the game Prey, but if you ever catch it on sale I highly recommend it. Right, well, today I've covered 10 of my favorite roguelikes, and while I certainly would have loved to cover a lot more roguelikes, like Darkest Dungeons or Hades, though I haven't played either of those, we'd be here forever if I did that. So I'll just list a bunch of other roguelikes on the screen right now. Hopefully this video has sparked your interests. I mean, the more people experiencing permadeath, the better in my opinion. Just so you know, I've posted links for every single game mentioned in the description. Some are free. Some just lead to a Steam page where you can buy it. Worst comes to worst, you know what to do. You are a pirate. You are a pirate. I hope you have a wonderful night, people. We'll be working on the next proper Kekka cringe just as soon as Mike's leprosy is cured.